Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you're a Lightroom user, you may have been frustrated trying to process a portrait in it. There really aren't any portrait specific tools in Lightroom. You have to make do with the spot removal tool and the brush. Well, there is a better way. What I recommend you do is download on one's portrait AI. Portrait AI will work as a Lightroom plugin and it has powerful tools for skin smoothing, eye enhancement, lip enhancement, eyebrow enhancement, and a lot more. And I'm going to go over it in this video. I mentioned on one portrait AI is available as a plugin in Lightroom. Specifically, it's actually a standalone app. Now, of course, if you purchase on one photo raw 2022 portrait AI is included in that package, but unfortunately it will not work as a plugin in Lightroom. You have to purchase it independently. And when you do purchase it independently, it works as a standalone app. It will edit raw files or it will work as a plugin in Photoshop and Lightroom. And that's the way I'm going to use it today. You could see I have Lightroom open. I think this is a great alternative for Lightroom users. When they need to process portraits, they could just use this plugin and they don't have to purchase the entire On One Photo Raw 2022 package. They could just purchase Portrait AI and get all those powerful tools I've been talking about. Now I have this image here in Lightroom and I haven't done any processing to it at all. You could see the basic tab is all zeroed out. The only thing that was done to it is lens corrections were applied. It is a Nikon RAW file. I did mention that Portrait AI does work on RAW files, but it only works on RAW files when you use it as a standalone app. Unfortunately, Lightroom has a limitation in that you never could send a RAW file from Lightroom into any plugin. It will send it as a PSD, TIFF, or JPEG. And that's what we have to do here. So I'm going to right click right on the image, go down to edit in, and I'm going to go over to On One Portrait AI 2022. And when you do that, you'll get this dialog box. And as I mentioned, we can't send the original raw file. We're going to send a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And, and as I mentioned, the only adjustments done were lens corrections. Now, file format, um, on one prefers PSD files, so we'll leave that as is. Color space, I prefer the largest color space Pro Photo RGB, so I'll change it to that. 16 bits per component. And resolution, really doesn't matter. A lot of people get hung up on resolution. You could put one in here and it won't make any difference. Uh, although, I will say uh, Epson, if you have an Epson printer, they recommend that you put 360 in there and you use 360 throughout your workflow, so I will do that and click edit. When I do that, Lightroom, as you could see in the top left-hand corner in that progress bar is creating this PSD file with those specifications, and then it will open it up automatically into On One Portrait AI. Now, when it does, uh, it will actually do a tiny bit of processing to it automatically. Now, as you look at it, You'll see over here the mask. It automatically found her face. You could see there's a mask there. And if I go to the skin section of the controls, you could see there's a little button right here. If I turn it off, you could see there's before and then there's after. So it actually retouched the skin slightly. So keep that in mind when you use this. Um, you may think, wow, it looks different, and I didn't do anything. Well, that's why it did some skin retouching automatically. Now, one thing I want to alert you to, by default, details will be folded closed. So click on that little expose triangle, and then you'll get different types of skin retouching. Uh, I prefer frequency separation because that pr preserves skin detail. For example, if I zoom in, you could still see the pores on her forehead, even with retouching at 50. So um, I prefer that. You may prefer in some instances to use surface blur. And if you're just a Lightroom only user and you're used to processing portraits in Lightroom using a brush, 
that's pretty much what you're doing is you're just blurring the surface. I prefer, as I mentioned, frequency separation. And typically the way I go about this is I will move the retouching slider at the top uh, to a point that I like. Now I usually don't want to go too far. I don't care for that kind of porcelain doll look. So I will bring it just enough um, to smooth the skin out, to get rid of any um, discoloration or maybe some uneven makeup sometimes. And this will take care of that. Um, any blemishes, it, smaller blemishes, it will help remove as well. And again, with the slider here, if she did have, let's say, a more significant blemish, I could move this to the right and it will just affect the blemishes. Um, if I want to add detail back into the skin, I could move this to the right. Uh, that's the detail slider. If I want to add more smoothing, I could do that. If I want to add more texture, I could do that or remove texture in this case, since that's maxed out at 100. And if there was shine on her face, which often happens, you can move that to the right to help remove or reduce the shine on a person's face. Now, we have some specific controls for the face. Personally, I like to brighten a person's face in my portraits. So I go to the brighten slider and I move that to the right and you can see how it brightens up her face significantly. You also, it, let's say you overexposed it a little bit, you could tone it down. Or if you're going for a low key um, kind of feel, you could tone it down as well by moving the brightness to the left. Now, the next slider I never use, slim face, uh, but you could see you could actually slim someone's face. Now, left eye size and right eye size. Uh, for some reason, my brain always has these backwards. To me, this is her left eye. But if I move the left eye size, it's moving what I consider to be her right eye. So it's the left as you're looking at your monitor and the right as you're looking at your monitor. Um, a lot of photographers like to increase the size of a model's eyes slightly. Uh, in the old days, when we only used Photoshop for this, we used to use a specific um, control in Photoshop and we only increased it usually 10%, which actually is a very, very slight amount, like something like that. Now, personally, what I like to use this for is quite often, um, especially if someone has their eyes turned slightly sideways and if you're using more of a wider angle lens, the eye that is closest to the camera will look significantly larger than the eye that is further away from the camera and it usually doesn't look natural. So typically, what I like to do is go to the eye that is further away from the camera. In this case, it wasn't a wider angle lens, but I would increase that one slightly uh, just to make it look a little more natural because it helps uh, compensate for that distortion that is introduced by the lens. So that's what I like to do. Now, as far as the eyes themselves, um, you could make them brighter. And typically I do. Uh, to me, that is the most important part of a portrait when I shoot and the way I frame up a subject is the person's eyes. And I like to uh, make sure that people notice the person's eyes. Now whitening, this is actually the whites of her eyes. You can see how you can make those brighter as well. You could add detail. Now this one you have to be careful with. If you go too far, you're getting marbles. Yeah, you don't want to do that. But um, by default, you know, it added some detail already. So you could just, you know, put that up. Dark circles, if she had some dark circles under her eyes, you could see she really doesn't. But if she did, you would help reduce it with that. And you could see how that's reducing those dark circles. Enhance her eyebrows. This basically makes them a little sharper and a little darker. So you could do that. Now, if there was red eyes um, from flash, uh, you would click this and that would remove that. Now that's not red eyes like blood vessels. Uh, that's just from flash. Now mouth, uh, you could whiten her teeth with this slider here. You could enhance the vibrance of her lips with this slider. And lip brightness, like maybe I wanna make her lips a little darker. And lip you, this is where you could actually kind of nudge the color of the lips a little bit with that slider there. So we've pretty much now processed, um, you know, her face. Now there is a little bit more I want to do here. She has a stray hair right here and we have some tools over on the left that will help with that. If you just hover over them, uh, you'll get a little kind of preview box 
telling you what it does. For example, this one's the adjustment brush, um, burning, uh, dodging, detail, stuff like that. Uh, faces, this is actually where we are for doing different types of um, processing of a person's face. Below that is retouch. Now this is what I want. Now when I click on that, you'll notice that there's actually four different tools here. From left to right, again, if you hover over them, you'll get an idea what they are. This is the healing brush. This is similar to the spot removal tool in Lightroom in that when you paint, it will sample a different part of the image and you could move the mask around to put that sampled area where you want it. Uh, this one I don't use that much here because there's more powerful tools. For There's the eraser tool. They call this the magic eraser or the perfect eraser. I always call it the magic eraser. Um, just paint over something and it will remove it. Uh, next to that is a similar tool. This is the retouch brush. This one's recommended more for blemishes. It does a really nice job on blemishes, acne, um, maybe some discoloration. That does a great job. And this is a clone stamp tool. This is a typical clone stamp tool like you'd find in Photoshop where it will take pixels from one area and put them over onto another area of the image. Now, I want to get rid of this stray hair, so I'm going to get the perfect eraser, not to be confused with what I call the magic eraser. And I want to get this stray hair out of here. So I'm just going to take it in pieces. What I recommend when you have varying texture underneath the item you want to remove, do it in parts. It will do a better job. Meaning I have forehead, uh, skin of her forehead here. Then we have eyebrow here. And then we have the skin above her eye here. And if I do that in one false swoop, it won't look right. So what I'll do is I'll take this little part right here first. Let it get rid of that. It takes a second. You can see a racing object. And then I'll take this area underneath next. If I could draw well, get rid of that. And there's a little like piece there. And what I'll do is I'll go to the healing brush for that or the retouch brush uh, for that. And I'll paint on that to try to lessen that. And that looks pretty good. And then maybe we'll just try right there, see if I don't. Sometimes you'll get a little smudge like I did there. If you don't like that, hit Commander Control Z as in Zebra, and it will undo that last step. And I think that's good. That looks fine like that. Now, one thing I want to alert you to, when you do use like the retouch tools over here on the right, often it will put you in this local area, and you'll see these sliders here. What you, if you want to go back in and reprocess or continue processing, let's say the skin or her eyes or something like that, you have to click on portrait and then you'll get those controls back. So you can see you have these two major sections, the portrait section and then the local adjustment section, local adjustments when you use the brushes and stuff over there. So we're going to stay in that portrait section. Also along the top, you could, you know, view a navigation window. You could view levels, info about the image, and the history, all the adjustments I've done here. You could revert back uh, to the beginning, so undo everything, or you could just step back by clicking on the different steps you did. Now, personally, I like that closed, and I'm pretty much done. Uh, so when you're done, just click Done in the lower right-hand corner and it will return us into Lightroom. And if there's any other processing you want to do in Lightroom, like you want you know, to add texture maybe, or maybe brush in some texture to a person's clothing or add some vibrance or something like that, you could do that in Lightroom. Now what we're going to do is when we're in Lightroom, we're going to have two files. We're going to have the original raw file and we're going to have our edited file. That's the PSD file. So there's the image in Lightroom, and here's the image after we edited it in On One Portrait AI. And I really think this is a no-brainer. If you're a Lightroom only user, but you're starting to do a lot more portraiture, uh, you may be frustrated with just the spot removal tool and the brush when you editing those types of images. So I think it's a no-brainer to get um, On One Portrait AI as a plugin and again it will work as a standalone app as well and then you'll be able to more effectively in my opinion edit portraits 
Um, in the description below this video, I have links to their website. I have a discount code. You could check it out. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.